Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the show. Hope everyone is doing well out there. Uh, we're going to do another video on our Firebase 3 real-time chat application tutorial. And today I want to show you guys how to actually delete a conversation from your chat application. So let me quickly show you guys a demo of what I have on my phone. Then we can actually go through the implementation in code on how to do the actual feature. So on my phone here, and what you're seeing on the screen is a logged in user of Sam Tarly, uh, currently having a conversation with Egret and Jon Snow. And if I swipe left on the Egret message, you can see the, uh, the delete button will be revealed on the right side. And upon hitting the delete, the message just gets removed completely from the controller. And it actually gets removed from Firebase database as well. So how do we actually perform the deletes and observe whenever something gets removed from our nodes inside of database? Well, let's go over exactly how to do that in our application right now. So going into Xcode, let's begin by running the application. And uh, we're going to start off with actually adding in the functionality that allows us to swipe to the left on one of these individual rows to reveal the delete button. So let's go ahead and look at messages controller inside of Xcode. And you notice if I try to swipe left on that guy, um, nothing happens. We actually get the, uh, the launching of this controller, which is not what we want. So let's enable the uh, deletion by going into view to load and perhaps on the bottom here, we'll say uh, table view allows multiple selection during editing. You just have to set this equal to true. And this is the first of the three things that you have to set in order to reveal the delete button. Uh, the second um, little bit of code to implement is to actually call table view can edit row at index path. And here we can just return true. Finally, the third step is to say, uh, commit editing style, one of these guys right here. Commit editing style right there. And I think I can just remove the file explorer. And in here, I think we should override this method here. And here is actually what the deletion will perform inside of a code. And if we simply type in print uh, index path like this, let's, actually print out the row as well. So if I run this application now and swipe on one of these rows, you're going to see the delete button uh, reveal itself in the right side of the screen. So there we go, delete. And if we hit the delete button, you see the console says zero right there. Well, if I try to write another message to perhaps Igret, uh, just some message and send and go back. If I swipe this guy, the bottom will actually say one instead of zero for the row inside of this entire table view controller. Now, the next bit of code to write is to actually perform the delete inside of uh, code here. So let me just remove the print statement and to actually delete this message here. So this last message that I just sent to Igor right here uh, belongs to, let's see, who am I logged in as? Well, inside of the users node, we have Jon Snow with this PII. WID right here, and then in user messages, we have PII, and it's one of these messages uh, belonging to, I believe, is this node right here. So we actually want to delete this entire node from this entire tree structure. So this 2H4K thing belongs to this Igret character, and when I delete this entire row, I'll delete this entire, this entire node right here. So we will go to the user messages node and then the logged in users ID and then to the chat partner ID of the message. So probably a little maybe long winded here, but I'm going to show you exactly how to do that inside of this line right here by saying fire database database uh, reference. And the first child is this user messages node. So if I can type this out correctly here, and then the second note is actually the child ID. So it's this PIIW9 guy right here. And I'm going to get the uh, user ID uh, like this. So let's use a guard statement of 
guard let UID equals Firebase auth, auth current user UID, else return. And this will give me access to the UID there to paste it in here. And the next thing to do is to actually get this uh, 2H4K guy from the actual message. And that is retrieved by uh, getting the actual message first. So let's see, what is this message here? Well, we can actually say, uh, if let message equals, see self dot messages. This is the array that holds all of the messages for this entire table view controller. And we can say, let's see, index path dot, uh, row perhaps. And let's see, close that off with a brace. This is how we get access to this message. And I think because this is a variable like that, so it's non-optional, we can actually get the message without this if let unwrapping. So let's see what that does. That's pretty good. Now we can append another child here with message.chatpartner uh, ID like that. So that'll give us this node right here. And all we have to do is to simply call, uh, let's see, remove, let's see, chat partner ID. What else is missing here? I think we actually need this chat partner ID unwrapped. So let's do, uh, da, da, da. so what I mean is you actually have to unwrap this guy right there. And we can just say if let chat partner, let's see, chat partner ID equals message dot chat partner ID. Go in here this guy there and we get this chat partner ID there we can remove this messages and remove these parentheses as well so here is the final reference that we need to actually call remove value with completion block so if we do that and call let's see hit enter for this completion block here fill in the error with a perhaps a ref right there and so upon deletion, which is what this is performing, we can check the error to see if the deletion actually went through by quickly checking if error is not equal to nil, then we'll print out the actual statement as fail to delete message with this error message right there. And then we'll return out of the entire completion block. Finally, if we do succeed, we actually need to update this entire table. So uh, seeing that there are a couple of ways of doing this, um, I'm gonna show you perhaps the unsafe way of doing this first. And if you guys are probably um, thinking about deleting it from this messages array, this is actually the incorrect way of doing this. Uh, and I'll show you guys why in just a little bit. So the first um, instinct would be to just call something like self table view, uh, I think delete rows at index path, and this will delete the row specified by perhaps this index path here. And the animation, I think we can use automatic like that. So let's see what this gives. And I think we also need to remove from the messages array, the actual messages in order for this to work. So if we say self dot, messages uh, remove at index right here and because the messages uh, array is kind of ordered from zero to uh, however many messages are in the side of this table we can just call index path dot row so this is one way of doing it so this is one way of updating the table uh, but it's actually not that's safe. And so if we remove this guy and then delete, um, the message disappears uh, also with the actual message for this egret character that is inside of this node here. So let me just show you guys exactly what that kind of looks like within the database. So let's type in a message there. It gets inserted here, this guy here. Let's see if I can go back and where are we? I think we're here. So we're here. And then we'll just remove this guy. And then that gets deleted. The table gets updated. So pretty straightforward. And uh, the issue here is now if I try to type in another message, 
for example, for another character like some of this, and we hit send, we see this eager message kind of comes back, right? So the reason why that is happening is because the true um, the true data storage for all of our messages actually exists inside of messages dictionary. And if you remember from a couple of episodes ago, um, every time we are observing one of these messages that gets inserted into Firebase, we eventually call this method of attempting to reload the table. And then we create or we construct our messages array from the messages dictionary. So that's how we render this entire table. Uh, it's actually coming from the values of messages dictionary. So the correct way of actually um, performing this delete inside of commit editing style is to actually remove it from the messages dictionary instead. And so here is what I will do. Uh, I will call self.messages dictionary. And I'll call it remove value for a key. And this key is actually just the uh, chat partner ID like that. And if I remove these two lines, I actually need to actually update the table now with the correct index path uh, to delete. Um, but instead, I'm just going to call self dot attempt reload of table. And we'll run the application and see what this will do. So if I run this, you see that the eager message has been cleared away because we've recon reconstructed the entire messages dictionary, uh, messages dictionary. And there we go. So if I delete this guy, we delete it. He goes away and we delete this. That person goes away. And if I try to message myself, I think that actually works as well. Let's see, who else can I message you again? So everything appears to be working correctly. Now the one disadvantage, is, uh, disadvantage to this approach is the animation isn't as smooth. So if I delete that, it kind of just jumps into place. Um, but there's really not too much you can do about that. Um, the approach of deleting the row from the index path isn't exactly all that safe because you can have a bunch of messages coming in to your application. And what will happen is that through various steps of updating your table, um, you don't actually have a reliable index path to which message you're trying to delete. So it's pretty difficult to show you guys um, an example of that, but you can imagine um, your application having perhaps a thousand messages coming in and out the index path for whenever you hit the delete button, this is not exactly going to be the correct message when the delete actually occurs. So it actually takes some time, perhaps maybe half a second or one whole second. And then your, your data inside your um, messages array becomes stale after a while. So that's how that works. Now, the other thing we want to actually handle is what happens when we are triggering a delete from outside of the application. So for example, what I mean is, let's say I message Igret one more time just for this example's sake. And this is the row right there. So Igret has this message here. And if I delete it from some kind of outside source, I would expect to um, have this row deleted as well. And to do that, we want to go into uh, observe user messages. And inside of this bit of code, we're actually observing this thing called child added, which means every time a new message comes into the system, we are notified of that message. Now, the other thing we can do is to observe uh, the event type of dot child removed. And if we do this, we can hit enter here for this snapshot completion block. And if we simply type print uh, snapshot thing dot key, and then we can also print perhaps self dot messages dictionary. I'm going to show you what this gives us inside of the console whenever we delete a message from an outside source. So let's message Let's see, I'm going to message Igret again. 
Hey there, hi, 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 I just said. And let's see, so you see the console is not, uh, it's pretty clean right now. And if I put a breakpoint there and go back to Firebase and delete this ignorant message here. So delete, delete. It's going to fire off this breakpoint here. And you'll see that the console prints out, let's see, what is it printing out here? It's bringing out this as the snapshot key for line 86. And then for this snapshot key, we have this message inside of this entire dictionary guy that's being printed out right here. So all we have to do is remove this outside of the uh, dictionary by calling the same function of self.messages dictionary, remove value or remove value for key. And we can just call snapshot.key which will give us the correct key. And uh, that should be good to go. One final thing is to actually update the table with attempt reload of table. And I'm going to run the application one final time and see what happens when I delete a message from an outside source. So we can just type in a message here, throughout various messages and head back. And so here's the message. I think we're missing some text here. So there we go. And if I remove this and delete, that goes away, remove this, that goes away, remove this, that goes away as well. And inside of Firebase, you'll, let's see, uh, there's all the messages that are gone. So if I actually hit perhaps a uh, message here, message there. Okay, let's have one message in the log and this belongs to this character here. So if I hit delete here, um, that message will disappear from the actual controller. So delete, delete, controller removes the message pretty cleanly, just like that. So da, da, da. let's try to remove a couple of different messages from Firebase. So let's type in one final message for Igret. And it said, so for this John Snow character, we have these three messages right here so let's remove let's see the middle one and delete so it goes away and if i hit this one of the characters will go away so uh pretty simple stuff and this is how you would do it uh inside a messages controller or how you would delete messages a little safer so that your application can kind of synchronize everything uh, from within one messages dictionary all right, that about wraps it up for today's short little video. Hope you guys kind of learned how to delete and manage the things that are inside of the messages controller. Uh, make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's content. Uh, if you want to download the actual project, it is available in the description with a link to, I think, my new website. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.